Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to begin the funeral service of Mr. Larry Herbsman. Rabbi Roy Furman will be officiating. For those of you who are here, the family appreciates that no one is wearing a tie. And for those of you who are joining us online, we typically do wear ties, but in this situation, no ties out of respect for Larry's wishes. Also, please take a moment to be sure that your cellular phones have been turned off not to disturb the sacred funeral ceremony. The Kriya ceremony will be done at graveside. Good afternoon. I'm going to read two psalms attributed to King David and then the words attributed to his son, Solomon. Runai mi ye gor ba holecha, mi ishkon bahar kochecha, holech tami mufoyo tzedek dover emet bilvavo. Who can rest in your tent, O God? Who can stand on your mountain? The one who walks upright, who does what is good, utters true words of the heart and does not deceive with the tongue, who does no harm to a neighbor and never reproaches others, and who sees crookedness for what it is and honors the truth that flows from it, whose word is firm even in difficulty, who gives asking nothing in return and does not seek advantage at the expense of the innocent, the one who lives this way will never be shaken. And the more familiar words from Psalm 23, David, you are my shepherd, I am content. You lead me to rest in the sweet grasses, to lie down by the quiet waters, and I am refreshed. You lead me down the right path, the path that unwinds in the pattern of your name. And even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are with me comforting me with your rod and your staff, showing me each step. You prepare a table before me in the midst of my adversity and moisten my head with oil. Surely my cup is overflowing and goodness and kindness will follow me. All the days of my life and in the long days beyond, I will always live in your house. Please join me if you know the Hebrew or the Lai Lai Lai. Is more led of thee. I don't know. I roe no exa. Be no dash. Yar be saying me. I'll name a new hot in a halene. She is If 
לפניי שולחן, תערוך לפניי שולחן. תערוך לפניי שולחן, נגד צהריי. דשנת ושמן ראשי דשנת ושמן ראשי דשנת ושמן ראשי כל סירב ושבתי בבית אדוני לאורך Now the words attributed to King Solomon. It is said that he was the wise person of his time. And his words seem to attest to that. Eight l'ta, l'chol zman ve'eit l'chol chayfetz tachet ha'shamayim, eit l'ledet ve'eit l'amut, עת לטעת ועת לעקור נטוע, עת לפרוץ ועת לבנות, עת לבכות ועת לשחוק, עת צפוד ועת רקוד, עת לחבוק ועת לרחוק מחבק, עת לבקש ועת לאבד, עת לשמור ועת להשליך, עת לקרוע ועת לטפור, עת לחשות ועת לדבר. There is a time, a season for everything and a time for every experience under heaven. For all of us, there is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot that which is planted, a time to tear down and one to build up, a time for weeping and for laughter, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to put away, a time to tear and a time for repair, a time to keep silence, and one for speaking up. There is much that we can say about Larry Herbstman and about his life, and I and others will surely do some of that. But first, I want to locate his life within the Jewish tradition and its calendar. We are newly emerged from that yearly stream of holy days with which we start every Jewish year. Rosh Hashanah with its wishes for a good and healthy year, and Yom Kippur with its acknowledgement of life's uncertainties, who in the coming year we say will be born and who pass away who will live and who will die, who will live a long life, and who will come to an untimely end. And surely these themes resonate with us as mourners, and this week particularly as Jews, more than they might have just a few short weeks ago. And then Sukkot, Zman Simchatenu, our season of joy, for which we Jews paradoxically build insubstantial huts with roofs designed to leak if it rains, and the reading of the book of Ecclesiastes, part of which, book of Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything, it says, 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. And then, finally, finally, we come to this, our post-holiday week, and we read in Torah this coming Shabbat from Bereshit, Genesis, the beginning, the creation of the world and its creatures. So this in the Jewish calendar is our week of new beginnings. Moses died, our Torah portion says, this past Sunday at the end of such a long wilderness trek. And now we are, as it were, newly created, beings who must struggle all over again to find our way through an uncertain world and its wilderness. Is it a coincidence that Larry died on the seventh day of Sukkot, Zman Simchatenu, the most joyous Jewish celebration? Is it a coincidence that Larry was born during the Jewish month of Adar with its Purim celebration, a month in which we are, our tradition says, commanded to maximize the amount of joy and fun making in our lives? Is it just a coincidence that Larry's Hebrew name is Eliezer Yitzchak, Eliezer, the one who laughs. When I looked at Larry's obituary notice on the website of this funeral home, the first thing that struck me, even before seeing Larry's face, was the giant polka-dotted bow tie that he wore around his neck. That, I was told, was the epitome of Larry's character. And that, I was also told, was the only neckwear, aside from the bolo tie, that Larry could abide. So an absolutely unique obituary request. Do test for COVID. Do not wear a tie. Larry, it seems, lived up to the name Yitzhak. He was loath to take life too seriously. He had, I'm told, a joke for everything. He had a sense of humor that drew people to him, most significantly Myra, when they met in the bowling alley, <laughs> and then decided to marry not too many months later. And he, in turn, found so much happiness in his family, especially his children, and especially, especially in his grandchildren, those he was not above spoiling. He made it a point to attend their soccer games and concerts and recitals, and he would, I am told, drop everything to be with them. But as lighthearted as he might appear, Larry had a serious commitment to living an ethical life, to doing the right thing, an aspect of his character that made a deep impression on his children. And he was seriously committed to chocolate. But <laughs> particularly in the form of chocolate rocks and chocolate good humor ice cream. He had a serious commitment to the scientific method and that he learned as an undergraduate uh, microbiology student and from his master's degree in education. While it is true that he spent many years teaching science in the classroom, it is also true, I understand, that he was turned his kitchen into a science lab following recipes in the exact way he would conduct a scientific experiment. And Larry, as part of the Herpsman clan, was, of course, committed to family, a trait he would have absorbed from his parents, Faye and Julius, for they would gather everyone together on Friday evening for a Shabbos meal, at which one could only absent oneself for a very good reason. But more than that, they were committed to one another, certainly Larry and his sisters and brother, but also the extended family network. I got a sense of how this works every time Paulette would say casually, oh, we're having 35 people or so over for Shabbat meal or for Pesach Seder, and oh, yes, I'll cook for them, and of course, bake challah. There was, if you will, a shadow side to Larry's life one which makes his life-affirming character and his bringing jokes and laughter into other people's lives stand out in stark relief. From an early age and throughout his life, he had to deal with challenges to his health. There was the ongoing concern with the allergic response to nuts. At a, at a time when it was not well known and a time in which one would not carry around an EpiPen. He was treated for tonsillitis in a way that seriously impacted his thyroid. 
He was asthmatic, hyperallergenic, had eye surgery, an ear tumor that compromised the hearing in one ear, and any number of hospitalizations and major surgeries. But Larry was his own cheerleading team with an ongoing determination to bounce back from whatever issue he was facing, and he would not let anything compromise his sense of humor. So our deepest sympathies go out to all of you, family and friends, those of you who knew Larry and loved him and were so very fortunate in having him as a part of your lives. You could not have known that the uncertain words of Rosh Hashanah, who in the coming year will live and who will die, would mean grieving for Larry Herpsman. But here we are, a community in mourning. Grief, as you know, will travel its own unpredictable course, with healing more gradually for some and more rapidly for others, as the blessings of good memories in time replaces much, but not all, of the pain of loss. Our hearts go out to you, Myra, on the loss of your husband and your life partner, now so many years after that absolutely fortuitous bowling alley meeting. You were blessed with almost 47 years of marriage to this dear, funny, caring man with whom you celebrated life's joys and together met life's challenges. May the support and comfort of your family and friends ease your way along the new and difficult path that now lies before you. As the older brother in the family, Larry was protective of his sisters and brother, would be there whenever they needed him, and was very proud of them and their successes. Much of what I have learned about Mary came, Larry came from Art, Bryna, and Paulette, Paulette, who spoke of him with deep affection, with pride, and with appreciation for who he was and how much he meant to them. So our heartfelt sympathies go out to you, Art, Bryna, and Paulette, from a low point in grief, may you be lifted up by one another, by your family and friends, and by your rich store of memories of how your big brother was there to lift you up when you needed it. And my condolences to you and Lee, Alan, and Sandy, who were fortunate enough to know Larry as one of the blessings of coming into his family. Ari and Yael, you came to know your father in that very special and important way that children do. And what you came to know was a man whose values, in whose values you took pride, a man worthy of your respect and admiration and love. The black Kriya ribbon that you now wear and which you will tear at graveside is worn by all mourners on the right side of the body except for those who are mourning a parent. Your ribbon is over your heart, as your grief is thought to be the deepest and your loss an existential one. Our condolences as well to those you brought into your family, Mivan Mui and Andy, Viola, Miranda, Archie, and Adira. You each got to know Papa Larry in very different ways, but he loved you all so very much and always wanted to be with you. Remember that he thought that you were terrific. And when you remember him, it's almost like he's still with you. Our condolences to the Herbstman cousins, nine in all, I am told. Keep sharing your memories of Larry as they have, in a way, entered your lives for a blessing. And our condolences as well to those of you who lost a dear friend Zichrono Livracha, may his memory be for us a very strong and comforting blessing. So now we ask um, Andy and, um, and Ari to share some words. <clears throat> no, I don't. <laughs> um, this is written by uh, my sister and I with thanks to Bench for helping. 
we love our dad. He taught us many things, and we would like to share a few with you today. Dad made sure we knew that fart jokes are always funny. He taught us to find humor in everything, good, bad, appropriate, or not. Dad taught us that school is important. Dad taught us to laugh early, often, and big enough to infect others, even if you don't get the joke. Dad taught us the value of always being present for our kids. He taught us to show up for every show, recital, game, everything. It's important to them, so it's important to us. Dad showed us to keep special places in your heart for special people. Dad taught us the value of embarrassing our children in public <laughs> and taught us how to do it by making us the butt of the joke, not them. Dad taught us we should never have important conversations while the water's running. Dad taught us it doesn't matter what you're doing, but that we should find the joy in it and to share that joy with everyone. Dad taught us always to help someone in need. No questions, no reservations. Dad taught us that grandkids can do no wrong. Us, it's a different story. But <laughs> Dad taught us to have forgiveness and say you're sorry, even when it's not your fault. Dad showed us it's never too late to start something new. Dad showed us how there's no value in shame. If it would make someone laugh or even bring a smile to their face, do it. Above all else, our dad taught us how to love. He showed us how to express it to those that matter and never be shy about saying I love you. He taught us to never withhold a hug. He taught us to always show love whenever possible and never ration it. We love our dad and we will miss him, even when he farted. So uh, my name is Andy, Andy Korn, and I'm Larry's son-in-law. Um, so I've been asked to offer some comments about kind of the Larry that I knew. Um, I met Larry about 15 years ago, joining the family. For me, Larry was always originally from Chicago, but he never lived here. He was always in the desert in Las Vegas, or he was in Washington State, living in the great Northwest living in the casual part of the country. You can imagine that that worked. We shared a mutual love being in each other's lives. These were the years where Larry found the joy in seeing his children, Ari and Yael, fall in love, marry, and create their own families. Larry wanted for all of us to have the same devotion and love that he and Myra had for 46 full, almost 47 years of marriage. And in it all, there were the dividends of his love, his four grandchildren, whom we loved deeply, Viola, Archie, Miranda, Adira. He was a fully devoted grandfather. Larry was also a casual person, hence my attire today. If Larry Foley had his way, you would probably be wearing your favorite pair of jeans and a sweatshirt you know, the ones in the front of the closet, the ones you go to first, uh, the real cozy ones. If you ever saw Larry in a tie, something was wrong. <laughs> uh, he was a casual, friendly person. And in his house, when you would visit Larry, that is how he lived. Visiting Larry, you were likely to hear a good joke. He'd probably tell you about the weather in Las Vegas, uh, which he loved to talk about almost every time I saw him. It's like, do you know how hot it is in Vegas today? And if your conversation would drift too serious, he was a, a master at the art of selective hearing. So whether that be turn the hearing aid down or try to get his attention, he, he knew when he wanted to be present and when he didn't want to be present. 
When I first met him, he was a teacher. He was teaching science. And as he transitioned to retirement, he moved that love of education into volunteerism. He tutored. He had a huge fish tank. He loved taking pictures. You would see him with a big camera a lot of the time. He loved doing puzzles. You know, he had a subscription like the Netflix of puzzles that would come. He loved reading, going to the library, reading his Kindle. Loved cooking, drinking coffee, spending time with neighbors, friends, his dogs, being with his family. And when you saw him, he'd always ask, how are you doing? Because he wanted to know that you were OK. And if you were not OK, or if you were sick, Larry was always there for you. When his grandchildren were sick, or when Yael and I needed him, he would drop everything to be there for us, even if it was late at night or early in the morning. You might have to call him a couple times it was early in the morning. <laughs> he was a night owl. But he'd be the first to offer you soup. He, would, he had a freezer that was fully stocked with medicinal soup. <laughs> I think I still have one or two of those bags left. So I'm going to have to be careful. Use them when I need them. Larry loved food, cooking soup. He loved to cook, experiment, grill. He liked to gather together at the table. And while I didn't know his father, Julius, I'm told they were very similar in that they would look at the dessert menu first. Larry did the exact same thing, dessert first. And speaking of food, there was always an extra portion at the table. And it was for his dogs. <laughs> you see, Larry was a dog dad. And after dinner, he would snuggle up with his dogs, Pumpkin, Penny, and most recently, his puppy, Freddy. On any given afternoon, you'd likely see Larry at a dog park with Myra and Penny and Freddy. Larry loved to be outside and to travel. He especially loved traveling with his family. One of his favorite walks was the Billy Frank Nisqually Wildlife Refuge in Washington State near his home. He also loved to vacation, and we had so many memorable trips as a family. He would never miss a trip to Chicago to visit his family for Passover, other than the quarantine years. <laughs> At the Passover Seder tables with Larry it was always a special treat. He would be just at his home with the kid's side of the table as he would with the adult side of the table. Where I saw him happy, happiest was his spirit around his grandchildren. Papa Larry was just one of the kids. Papa would always be there to take a hand. And even though he knew he shouldn't, he would be the first one on the floor <laughs> to play alongside. He couldn't get back up, but he would get down. <laughs> You know, this week I was looking at many of the videos and pictures that we've taken over the last few years. You know, young kids, phones, you have tons and tons of pictures. And we have so many memories that bring out the joy and love of a proud papa that would quite literally roll down a grassy hill on a spring day, kiss or nurse a kepi, blow a very loud raspberry on their arm, <laughs> and never stop encouraging or loving them. Finally, I'd like to share one of Larry's favorite pastimes, which was a television program in CIS. <laughs> you might even call Larry a super fan. Yes. The special agents, and I'm positive that the lab forensics appealed to Larry's inner scientist, and it was the humor in the series that probably made it a can't miss for him. A Frequent fixture arriving for Shabbos was Larry wrapping up just one more case on NCIS. The show's central character, uh, Detective Gibbs, I think Larry really liked. He had a hat, he had the coffee mug, the coffee mug that had all the Gibbs rules on it. These are the rules of life for this detective. And, I, and Larry was quick to quip. So I'm gonna leave you with five. It's like 50 of them. 
of these rules that I think would be really great right now. You do what you have to for family. Sometimes you're wrong. It's better to seek forgiveness than ask permission. <laughs> Always work as a team. And finally, never take anything for granted. Larry would remind us all to not take our time together for granted. Laugh more, don't skip dessert, hug your grandchildren and children, and spend your precious lives taking care of each other. Thank you both. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, to please rise uh, for El Malir um, I'm going to read a translation, and Liz will, will chant the Hebrew. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Larry Herbstman, who has entered eternity God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he now rest in peace. And we say, Amen. El <laughs> Shochen ba merumim, hamtse menucha nechona, tahat kanfe hashkina. Am kdoshim kdoshim utorim, kazohar harakia mazirim, et nishmat Eliezer Yitzchak. Ben Feko of Yisrael Yosef, Shahalach le Olamo. Baal Harachamim, Yasti Rehu, Beseter Knafav le Olamim, Beitzror Beitzror Achaim, Et Nishmato, Adonai Hunachalato. Vianuach Beshalom al Mishkavo. Venomar Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the interment service will continue at Shalom Memorial Park Cemetery, located at 1700 West Rand Road in Arlington Heights. Family will be returning to the Herbstman residence at 1731 Providence Way in Northbrook following the interment till 9 p.m. And then the Herbstman Sloan residence at 2770 Prairie Avenue in Evanston, Thursday from 3 to 5 and then 6 to 9. There'll be Minion at 7 p.m. at both residences, and Friday from 1 to 4.30, and there'll be a Mincha on Friday at 4 p.m. All that information is on the service folder as well as con uh, memorial contributions to the American Friends of Magain David Adom or the Michael I. Jacobson Memorial Gomel Fund. For those of you who are joining us via live stream, that information can all be found on the Funeral Homes website. For those of you who will be driving in the procession to the cemetery, the procession will be forming in our parking lot. Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. For additional measures of safety, we'll have a car in the back of the procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. Please use your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. Please do not speak or text on your cellular phone while driving to a cemetery. At this time, I'd like to call the pallbearers to come forward as we escort Larry's casket from the chapel. We invite everyone to please rise. You're going to follow that John over.
Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not taking a moment to sign the register, you can do so. Just in closing service.